Hello and welcome to Evening Reading and Prayer. It's Tuesday, August the 29th of 2023. Our opening is from Charles Swindoll's Bedside Blessings and our prayers this evening come from Max Lucado's Start with Prayer. We are commanded to stop, literally, rest, relax, let go, and make time for God. The scene of, is one of stillness and quietness, listening and waiting before him. Such foreign experiences in these busy times. Nevertheless, knowing God deeply and intimately requires such discipline. Silence is indispensable. If we, add, if we hope to add depth, to our spiritual life. Be still and know that I am God. Psalm 46, verse 10. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, you breathe life into the world. Your presence surrounds us and your word stands forever. When we are challenged, Help us remember that the truth of your word is the guidance we should use for living a life that pleases you. Help us grow stronger and wiser in the time we spend with you. Thank you for your unchanging word. Thank you that we can use it as our guideline for daily living. Knowing that our faith and life are grounded in your truth gives us the strength to extend grace and forgiveness. In your glorious and holy name. Amen. <clears throat> Our first scripture reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 1 to 5 and 7 to 12. Do not judge so that you may not be judged. For the judgment you give will be the judgment you get, and the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, let me take the speck out of your eye, while the log is in your own eye? You hypocrite. First, take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. Ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asked for bread, would give a stone? Or if the child asked for a fish, would give a snake? Or if the child, if you then, pardon me, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? In everything you do, do to others as you would have them do to you. For this is the law and the prophets. And from Romans chapter 13, verses 8 to 12. Owe no one to anything, pardon me, owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And any other commandment are summed up in this word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is already the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone and the day is near. Let us throw off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our reading this evening comes from a series of devotions written by Roma Downey. You may remember her from uh, the TV show Touched by an Angel. And the book is simply called Be an Angel. I'm so grateful for the special relationship God has given me with Riley, my beautiful daughter. From the moment I first held Riley in my arms, God opened the door to a love stronger and deeper than I'd ever imagined. 
I cherished the times we spent during her early years, building snowmen in the winter and sandcastles in the summer. We constructed elaborate forts for stuffed animals, with whom we also reenacted our favorite movies. As Riley grew, I celebrated her accomplishments and helped her during heartbreak. Whatever we're doing, wherever we are, I love being her mom. When Riley hit adolescence, she sometimes had questions about school, friends, or teenage drama. As part of the theater program at school, she and her classmates had to navigate getting or not getting the roles they wanted. I don't know what to do, Mom, she'd lament. What would you want someone else to do in this situation? I'd usually respond. How would you feel if you were in the other person's place? My feelings would be hurt, she might reply, or it was really disappointing to make it through the final callback and not get the part. Riley and I had important talks about rejection. In the acting world, someone will always have the happy feeling, I got the part, while someone else will have the hard feeling, I didn't land the role. I wanted her to know that even though rejection is a big part of the entertainment world, she could reframe her thoughts, putting herself in the place of others, and deliberately respond with kindness. In these conversations, I pointed Riley back to the golden rule. The Gospel of Matthew records how Jesus articulated this principle. Do to others what you would have them do to you. A version of this simple maxim can be found in almost every culture around the globe. Over the years, I spent time cultivating golden rule kindness with Riley. We'd discuss whether she needed to do something for someone or show compassion and forgiveness to someone. Times when Riley or I needed to ask for forgiveness from someone else arose too. Pondering the golden rule almost always led us to the best next step, whether that was a decision to make or an action to take. When my daughter and I chose to align ourselves with the words of Jesus, we brought more of his love and light to the world, just like his heavenly angels do when they touch human lives. How do you respond to this, dear one? Do you regularly practice the golden rule? If so, keep going. If not, or if your answer is sometimes but not always, like it is for most of us, today is a great day to start reflecting God's character of love, kindness, and respect for all people. You can be like an angel on earth by staying golden. Our closing prayer is from the website adailyprayer.wordpress.com. Let us pray. Father, you have placed your children in a world where people push and shove to be first. Because of their self-importance, they clamor for recognition and will stop at nothing until they get what they want in life, even if it means hurting others in the process. But you've called us to view life from a perspective that considers others as important as ourselves. We are to have a humble attitude that puts you first, others second, and ourselves last in everything we do. In our humanity, this is impossible. But as we are being transformed into the likeness of your son, Jesus, we become more like him. Our love and consideration for others grows and we apply the golden rule to our lives where we do to others as we would have them do to us. May this relationship rule guide us as we make decisions that affect others and ourselves. Help us to have the mind of Christ in all that we do. Amen. As you reflect on the events of this day and possibly what may come in the next few, Remember the golden rule. You can bring light in the darkness of someone else's life simply by living by its words. God bless you through this night and as you awaken tomorrow. Amen. Good night.